LinkedIn, we LinkedIn, and we back with another video, man. If y'all listening to my voice, make sure y'all like the video. Hey, if y'all new to the channel, make sure y'all hit that subscribe button, man. If y'all still here, make sure y'all drop a comment right now. Look, right? We got this YMW Melly interrogation video coming out when he was 16 years old, right? Granted. But when he earned his stripes and did all the things he did, he was past 16. So he was already out there in the streets knowing what he was doing and knowing that he had already snitched. You feel me? But I've been seeing this video. Somebody sent it to me yesterday on Twitter, but they were saying it was another guy named Taylor Wilson. So I just tried to take a little time, do some more research, and not everybody uploading about it. But I got a different angle I'm going to show y'all. Y'all check out this video and I'll be right back. Yeah, your time. You really, need to, you really need to think about what you're going to do. Because now is the time to try to be honest and try to make things right. Okay? If you shot in self-defense or something, you need to let us know. I did. What happened? Somebody at the front tomato pulled out a gun on me. Who? One of the kids. Somebody you go to school with? Yeah. Same grade? Yeah. What's he go by? Alright, what's his street name? I know his last name, Glispie. Glispie? Okay. What kind of gun was it? 38 revolver. How do you know it was a 38? I've seen it. How close? This close. Okay. So what did you do then? I ran away. Yeah, nah, as y'all can see, man, he... I chopped the video up to get y'all just, you know, the meat and potatoes of it, just to get mainly all the way to it, right? So basically, this snitching agenda, and you know, if you in the streets, bro, this is how I go, bro. You get caught, you do something, bro. You never, ever, ever talk to the police, nobody, bro. You always discuss what's going on with your case or whatever you got to do. You taking a plea, you fighting it. You do all that discussing with your lawyer, bro. You do not talk to the police, no type of law enforcement, no type of nothing, DA, nobody, bro, about nothing that you have done in your charges or what you being accused of or all the accusations. You never talk to no one but your lawyer about this, bro. You get what I'm saying? And that is the main point in the street code, the snitching stuff, man. It's been so, the lines have been blurred so much with this, bro. And it's really cut and dry. You know what I'm saying? It's really, really cut and dry. It's period, bro. If you in an interrogation room or if you doing any type of thing and you are telling and letting the police know, the people know what happened during the alleged charged charges or the alleged charges against someone, you are snitching, bro. No if ends, what's about it? I don't care if you say, oh, yeah, like how everybody saying with the boss and Richie. Oh, I told him this. I lied. I did this. Like with the Rollo stuff. Oh, uh, I was trying to finesse. Bro, it ain't no finessing when you talking to him, bro. You get what I'm saying? Because the whole thing is if they got you, you're going to be in cuffs and you're going to be charged already. If they don't, then they're going to question you. It's that simple. So, boom. If you already charged and facing them charges, yeah, they got something on you. It may not be strong. You get what I'm saying? So that's why they need you to cooperate to make their case strong enough to actually get a conviction against you, right? Or, boom, they got you nailed to the cross. And then they feel like, all right, we got enough evidence. We got everything we need to kill them. Then that's when you sit down with your um, defense team and try to build a defense to try to get the least amount of time as possible or get the best deal for yourself if you're not involved in a RICO or a charge that multiple people is in. You sit there and try to get the best deal if it's looking bad or you take it to trial and you beat it. You get what I'm saying? It's not that hard, bro. Everybody trying to blur the lines and push the barriers of it. That's what it is, point blank, period. But back to this case in this scenario right here. Um, the only thing that is kind of weird to me is that all this information and everything came out in the midst of him in this new trial, bro. Now, look, let me tell you something. This video, this everything is only can be accessed by like the DEA office, law enforcement and all that. This is not something that's public. You get what I'm saying? So when this came out, it was clearly a tactic 
against him in this new trial because they clearly were losing so they was like okay boom they always got an ace in the hole they always got something to back it up like all right boom we're gonna change the narrative we're gonna get the public on our side you get what i'm saying so they dropped the video they didn't care if he was snitching or not they was like all right it's a win-win for him right because look right we dropped the video now people in the jury or whatever it may sway the decision you get what i'm saying they're gonna be like oh well he was 16 years old he got um in trouble and convicted for shooting somebody and he admitted that he shot the, at them on camera he admitted this when he was 16 year old that is how the prosecution and the da looking at it like all right so if the jurors or the word get back to them they're gonna be like oh yeah yeah he was on camera admitting that he shot at somebody when he was 16 so what makes it so hard to believe that he killed his two friends he you know what i'm saying it's clearly all his music is about murder his biggest song is about murder he's on an interrogation on 16 years old telling and admitting uh shooting at someone about the gun or high in the gun all type of different things right that is the one side of it and then they looked at the other side of it like all right boom what if that don't help us in our case then right they is so malicious they were like all right like what if something happened to him in court i mean after he get out of court like if he beat the charge and then he got to go on the street with these allegations of being a snitch boom it hey, wait wait while he in jail right now he got this snitch allegation hovering over him so something could still happen to him in that case too you get what i'm saying so the da the government they play a dirty game bro you get what i'm saying so when you in that courtroom you fight for your life man just like anything bro they trying to do anything to win bro you get what I'm saying? They not just about to be like, oh, our case looking, what's the name looking weak? We ain't got him. Oh, he got us. They got a little defense. They got a little angle in the defense. And then you think they just going to give up and let you win? No. They going to fight to the death. They going to do whatever they got to do to win, bro. And this is just another tactic for them. You know what I'm saying? And the whole thing about this YNW Melly case is the reason why the death penalty is even on this case is because in Florida, it used to be like for someone to be eligible to get the death penalty, it used to be all 12 people had to vote yes for the death penalty for it to stick in the case. Now, with some new law that changed in Florida, it's eight and four, right? So now, out of the 12 people, if eight of those people feel like you should get the death penalty, they can still put it on you. You get what I'm saying? So, versus it used to be like you had to be a perfect 12 and 0 for the death penalty. Um, usually they change the law to where it's an eight and four. That's why the death penalty is still on this case. And that's really important too. So the, you can't just look at this case and the state in this case and just be like, oh, they don't care. They don't care if they win or beat this case. No, they've been building a case. They've been fighting this for five years. When the police and the people go to trial, man, they take them money, man. They cost them money for all them judges and people be typing and officers and camera. It costs them money, man. So they get mad when they make, when you make them spend money, bro. So they not just about to be all like all peaches and cream with them and, and, and try to let this shit slide. You get what I'm saying? So this is a crazy case, man. This is real, real suspicious that this video has came out. And another angle, you can look at it like, man, the whole rap game is, you know, it, it's snitching, bro. You get me? Gonna just drop some of the hottest music ever. Like, I ain't no snitch. I don't care about the politics. Hey, man, that my girl was banging that gunner the other day. I'm like, man, what's that? Heat. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> but I ain't banging that on my own accord, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I came in, my girl was cleaning up, and she had that gun on. I'm like, damn, what is that? You know? Um, but that's besides the point, man. Um, people should learn how to separate um, the art from personal business, man. That, but the whole thing is if you're going to sit there and you're going to get down with some dudes that's street dudes and they live by a certain set of rules you get what i'm saying you join a group of people who everybody work out every day you think you can't just get in a group and then not be working out you get what i'm saying so it's the same thing reverse you join a group of a whole bunch of street dudes you got to be the street dude too you get what i'm saying so if you break that code then you out the group but i just feel like um you know the artistry shouldn't really be attached to the uh personal as much if the artist himself or themselves don't attach it if they don't be all, oh, I'm living this in real life, I'm living all my raps and all that, then we can kind of separate it and give them, it just depends on the lane. And it's a real blurred line, it's a, it's a thin line, but I just feel like, you know what I'm saying, once you take that leap and you say you a street dude, you a street rapper, you live what you're doing, you, uh, 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 
you can't go outside like that, man, and be taking pleas and telling everybody, and yes, ma'am, and in there. You just can't go outside like that, man. And that's just my take on it, man. But look, though, man, I appreciate everybody still listening and rocking through the video, man. If y'all new to the channel, make sure y'all hit that subscribe button, man. Make sure y'all like the video right now, man. Like it, like it, like it, like the video. Then, hey, make sure y'all drop a comment, man. And for sure, make sure y'all do. And what I need y'all to do is tell a friend, a tell a friend, a tell a friend. We LinkedIn.